good morning children last class we have discussed with vector bond disease under this uh, we have discussed about malaria alone you know very well what is mean by vector bond disease that is uh, the disease transmitted through vector from the resources to the healthy person okay that means from uh, infected person to healthy person this is called what vector bond disease and last class i have discussed with you about malaria and now i am going to discuss with you about chikungunya it's also caused by virus uh, transmitted in humans by the bite of infected adders aegypti mosquito during the day time so chikungunya is a viral disease it's also vector bond disease this disease can be transmitted by biting of adders mosquito during the day time it what are the symptoms it causes severe and persistent uh, joint pain body rashes headache and fever these are the symptoms of chikungunya and uh, joint pains can last for a very long time so even if you recover from the disease there uh, will be a joint pain in the affected person for very long time then incubation period of the virus is usually 2 to 12 days chillness high fever vomiting nausea headache persistent joint pain and difficulty in walking are the common symptoms associated with this disease see what are the symptoms of uh, chikungunya and uh, mention its incubation period you will get as 3 or 4 marcos in so 2 or 4 marcos in the incubation period of uh, this virus is 2 to 12 days what does mean by incubation period it is nothing but the period between the first infection of the virus and appearance of first dif- uh, symptoms of that disease is called incubation period and the common symptoms of this disease are chillness high fever vomiting nausea headache persistent joint pain and difficulty in walking or the common symptoms associated with this disease the joints get inflamed and the person finds it's difficult to walk paracetamol is a given to relieve pain and reduce fever and next dengue it's also called as a break bone fever why because when a person affected by dengue and he or she will be affected with a severe or chronic uh, bone pain that's what it is called as break bone fever the name break bone fever was given due to the cause of intense joint and muscle pain dengue fever is caused by virus and transmitted by adders aegypti mosquito and its incubation period 5 to 6 days onset of high fever severe headache muscle and joint pain rashes hemorrhage fallen blood platelets count or the symptoms associated with this disease and vomiting and abdominal pain difficulty in breathing minute spots on the skin signifying bleeding within the skin or also associated with dengue fever and for this disease also paracetamol is given to reduce fever and body ache complete rest and increased intake of fluid is essential and next an extraction see in do you know an extraction of tender leaves of papaya and herbal drink nilavembu kudineer is given to dengue patient it's known to increase the blood platelets count next filaria filaria is a major health problem in india this disease is caused by nematode worm ucheraria bankrafti the adult worms are uh, usually found in the lymphatic system of man transmitted by the bite of infected culex mosquito so filaria actually the disease we have discussed previously such as chikungunya and dengue or viral disease and malaria is a bacterial pro- sorry protozoan disease and this filaria it's a disease caused by helminthes parasite okay it's a worm it is not a virus or bacteria or protozoan it is a worm it is a nematode worm and uh, this nematode worm transmitted by culex mosquito the name of the nematode worm is vecheraria bankrofti and its incubation period 8 to 16 days uh, sorry 8 to 16 months and the symptoms include acute infection fever 
inflammation in lymph glands in chronic infection the main feature is elephantiasis which affect the legs scrotum and the arms okay so then uh, the legs arms uh, become swell and uh, like a uh, elephant's legs that's what it is called as elephantiasis so these are the various vector burn disease we have discussed so far there are four diseases we have discussed malaria chikungunya dengue and filaria or the four diseases we have discussed under the topic vector burn disease next one is mosquitoes prevention and control since uh, in the above said diseases are transmitted mainly through the mosquitoes if we prevent the growth and uh, population of mosquito we can uh, control the above said diseases okay so what are the methods we can uh, follow to control the mosquitoes prevention of mosquito bites by using mosquito nets mosquito screens mosquito repellents and ointments these are uh, the things which we are using in our day to day life children using mosquito nets mosquito screens mosquito repellents and ointments and elimination of breeding places by providing adequate sanitation underground wastewater disposal system and drainage of stagnant water okay next one is um, we have to eliminate the breeding place of mosquito uh, what are the breeding place of mosquito sewage water underground water and stagnant water on the road side and other residential area sites are the place where the breeding of mosquitoes have taken place okay if we uh do uh, essential steps we can prevent the breeding of this if the st- uh, if we avoid the stagnant water around the residential area and road side we can prevent the growth of mosquitoes and the same way underground water sewage water also provided with necessary uh, preventive st- Preven- sorry, preventive steps then collection of water in any uncovered un- container such as water tank pots flowers flower pots discarded ties should be avoided so um, collection of water in any uncovered container what are the uncovered container water tank some of the water tank are not used so it kept open so in that uh, if there is rain the water is stayed in that tank and in that place uh, this mosquitoes can be bred and also parts then some flower parts unused flower parts discarded ties these are the place where the chances are more to breed the mosquitoes then control of mosquito larvae by spraying oil on stagnant dead water bodies so in stagnated water bodies if you spray the oils the oils covers the surface of the water bodies and prevent the penetration of oxygen into that water body so so you, the mosquitoes cannot get enough water oxygen it started to die and adult mosquito can be killed by spraying insecticide application of uh, citronella oil or eucalyptus oil on the exposed skin so these are the various prevention and control of ma- mosquitoes it's a four mark question bracketed children and um, next one is diseases transmitted by animals okay uh, what are the diseases transmitted by animals one by one we are going to see here first one is swine flu swine flu first originated from pigs it is caused by virus that affects a pigs and has started infecting humans first it infect the pigs and started to infecting the humans the virus spread through air it affects the respiratory system okay so in swine flu it uh, swine flu is a disease caused by virus and spread through the air and the infective parts of human is respiratory system influenza virus h1n1 has been identified as the cause of this disease okay which one is uh, 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 which one or name the virus which caused the influ- uh, swine flu influenza virus it's a h1n1 has been identified as the cause of this disease it is transmitted from person to person by inhalation or ingestion of droplets containing virus from people sneezing or coughing okay when an infected person uh, sneezing or coughing the droplets from his mouth and nose enter into the air when a healthy person near to him if supposed to 
inhale that uh, droplets automatically the virus can enter into that healthy person in that way the disease can be transmitted from healthy person to infected uh, infected person to healthy person and fever cough nostril secretion fatigue headache a sore throat rashes in the body body ache or pain chills nausea vomiting and diarrhea and shortness of breath or the symptoms associated with this disease and uh, prevention and control administration of nasal spray vaccine and avoiding close contact with a person suffering from flu intake of water and fruit juices will help prevention of dehydration plenty of rest will help the body to fight infection always wash hand and practice good hygiene so these are the various steps we can escape or prevent and control the flu disease swine flu first surfaced in april 2009 and affected millions of people then in june 2009 it was declared a pandemic by the world health organization in 2015 india reported had over 31000 people infected and 1900 resulting death okay next one is avian influenza it is also transmitted through animals that is birds avian influenza is a contagious bird disease caused by viruses birds that can carry and spread avian influenza virus include poultry that is chicken turkey and ducks wild birds and pet birds it is caused by influenza virus h5n1 so swine flu is caused by influenza virus but this is h5n1 that is uh, sorry avian influenza swine flu is caused by h1n1 avian influenza is caused by influenza virus h5n1 and incubation period 2 to 7 days uh, people who have close contact with the infected birds or um, surface that have been contaminated by the bird secretion from mouth eyes mucus nasal secretion or droppings transmit this disease okay so this disease transmitted from birds to human how it can be transmitted from birds to human if a person is uh, have close contact with the infected birds he will be affected by this disease or uh, if he is supposed to expose the Uh, say contamination of bird secretion such as um, secretion from mouth eyes mucus nasal secretion or droppings can be transmit this disease and the symptoms of this disease are fever cough sore throat running nose muscle and body ache fatigue headache redness of eyes and difficulty in breathing or the symptoms of this diseases okay so you can see uh, poultry flu poultry to human virus transfer through the eye nose mouth and touch and h5n1 virus which affect the respiratory tract mostly and its symptoms are high fever cough sneezing breathing difficulties loss of appetites and prevention and control of this disease avoiding open air markets where infected birds are sold avoiding contact with infected birds or consumption of infected poultry proper cleaning and cooking of poultry so these are the various uh, prevention and control measures against this disease and the avian influenza virus emerged in 1996 it was uh, first identified in southern china and uh, hong kong H5N1 was first discovered in uh, humans in 1997 by World Health Organization. First outbreak was in December 2003. Next we are going to discuss uh, another new topic sexually transmitted diseases. Some pathogens are transmitted by sexual contact from one person to another and not by casual physical contact. A few sexually transmitted diseases are AIDS, gonorrhea, genital warts, genital herpes and syphilis. Already we are familiar with this disease AIDS. Actually AIDS is a disease caused due to the sexual transmission and apart from the sexual contact it also transmitted through a blood and blood, blood product transfusion and um, sharing a common uh, needles 
and sharing common resources in saving time all the all the ways by which aids can be spread and some other diseases also we can find which are transmitted through the sexually transmission so sexual contact gonorrhea genital warts genital herpes and syphilis are the diseases which are transmitted through sexual contact okay uh, let's see about uh, aids here aids uh, acquired immuno deficiency syndrome is the expansion of aids it's a caused by a retrovirus and the name of retrovirus is human immuno deficiency virus right okay so expansion of aids is acquired immuno deficiency virus uh, deficiency syndrome this is caused by a virus retrovirus the name of the retrovirus is hiv it is called human immuno deficiency virus the virus attack the white blood cells or lymphocytes and weakens the body immunity or self defense mechanism so you do know very well our body self defense mechanism as immune system the immune system uh, the main participation of immunity is by the lymphocyte a type of white blood cells so white blood cells are two uh, lymphos or many types in that lymphocytes or take part in the immunity or uh, fight against the disease the lymphocytes are t lympho uh, two types t lymphocyte and b lymphocyte actually b lymphocyte produce antibodies when pathogens enter into our body and destroy that uh, pathogen by producing antibody b lymphocyte destroy the pathogen which are entering into our body and what about the t lymphocyte the t lymphocytes or the cells which destroy the infected cells usually when a pathogen enter into our body it enter into any of our cells see uh, this t lymphocyte find the infected cells and destroy the whole infected cells of our body since uh, this pathogens or uh, necessary if, sorry pathogens uh, have a essential function that uh, they should have um, what uh, body cells for their energy purpose when we, the t lymphocyte destroy the whole cells the pathogens also destroyed along with the cells since it is totally depend upon the energy purpose that is cells so like that the both the t cells and b cells involved in the defense mechanism of our body so this hiates you know the hiv enter into our body it directly destroy the white blood cells which are involved in the defense mechanism appo white blood cells ye alikkum bodu nama body oda defense mechanism enna idudu korinjirudu okay that is what when the different uh, immunity is reduced in our body automatically our body is exposed to pathogens and many sin uh, diseases or uh, possible to enter into our body so a group of disease are accumulated in our body that is called what syndrome what is called syndrome a group of disease that is called syndrome so it's what acquired immuno deficiency syndrome so the virus attack the white blood cells or lymphocyte and weakens the body's immune system or immunity or self defense mechanism it is transmitted through sexual contact from infected person to a healthy person or through blood contact by by a transfusion of unscreened blood by surgical equipments infected needles and syringes maternal fetal transmission from infected mother to fetus if mother is infected with hiv automatically it will be transmitted to the fetus weight loss prolonged fever sweating at night chronic diarrhea are some of the important symptoms okay so explain about the structure about aids with its symptoms and prevention you will have a see a five mark seven mark question with the diagram prevention and control disposable syringes and needles should be used and uh, protected and safe sexual contact screening of blood before blood transfusion avoid sharing saving blades and rashes people should be educated about aids transmission so these are the various uh, preventive measures against the hiv hiv was first recognized recognized in hatay usa in 1981 in india the first confirmed evidence of aids infection was reported in april 1986 from tamil nadu the aids vaccine rv144 trial was conducted in thailand in 2003 and reports were presented in 2011 
Next, hepatitis B or serum hepatitis. It is also one of the sexually transmitted disease. It occurs due to infection of hepatitis B virus. Virus damages the liver cells causing acute inflammation and cirrhosis of liver. It is transmitted from infected mother to their babies or by sexual contact. It is also transmitted by contact with infected person's secretion such as saliva, sweat, tears, breast milk and blood. So, um, these are the symptoms of this disease. So, sorry, transmission of this disease. Symptoms of this disease are fever, loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting, yellow in the eyes and the skin, light colored stools, itching of skin, headache and joint pain are the symptoms of this disease and how to prevent and control screening of blood donors before the blood donation can prevent the transmission. Actually, when, uh, when a person uh, donate the blood or uh, when a person get a blood, it should be screened whether that blood consists of HIV or hepatitis B or any other infection is there it should be screened. Injection of drugs to be prevented having safe and productive sex sharing of uh, as a, of should be avoided the hepatitis B vaccine offers excellent protection against HPV the vaccine is safe and highly effective some of the other sexually transmitted disease caused by bacteria and virus are discussed in table that we will see in later. Next immunization, what does mean by immunization? You know very well, immunization is a process of developing resistance to infect infections by administration of antigens or antibodies that is called immunization bracketed dumarcosine. It is a uh, immunization is a process uh, developing resistance to infection by administration of antigens or antibodies. By administering antigen antibody in our bodies, in our body, we can uh, develop the resistance against a particular disease. If we get a vaccine or antibody against say for example typhoid disease, your body will uh, develop resistance against that typhoid disease okay that is called what immunization inoculation of vaccines into the body to prevent disease is called what vaccination what is vaccination so inoculation of vaccine where we have to inoculate into our body what for we have to inoculate the vaccine to prevent the disease and this is called what vaccination one effective way of controlling the spread of infection is to strengthen the host def de defenses this is accomplished by immunization which is one of the cost effective weapon of modern medicine. Okay, When large proportion of a community is immunized against a disease, the rest of the people in the community are benefited because the disease does not spread. So when a large proportion of the community when, are, uh, when they are getting vaccine, they are resist developing resistance against the disease. So what happened? The spread of that particular disease will be controlled. Okay, next vaccine and its types. Vaccines are a preparation of living or killed microorganism or their product used for prevention or treatment of disease. Okay, see we have discussed about vaccination, we have discussed about immunization. Now we are going to see vaccine. First of all, vaccination is nothing but uh, inauguration of vaccine that is called a vaccination. What for we are uh, getting vaccination? So, to develop resistance against the disease that is called what immunization that's it vaccine powder process vaccination vaccination all disease resistant develop that is called immunization now what is called vaccine that's question okay uh, vaccine is nothing but it is a product it is a product of uh, a microbes they, uh, even though they are taken from the microbes it will kill the other microbes. It will kill or prevent the entry or prevent the growth of particular disease. That is called what? Vaccine. So, vaccines are preparation of living or killed microorganisms or their product used for prevention or treatment of diseases. Vaccines are of two types. One is live vaccine, another one is killed vaccine. Live vaccine, they are prepared from living organisms. The pathogen is weakened and administrated. Example, BCG vaccine, oral polio vaccine. 
So, actually in a, a live vaccine they are prepared from living organism, the vaccine prepared from living organism are called live vaccine. The pathogen is weakened, so if it is entered as it is into our body, it will cause disease in our body. So, it should be weakened and administrated, example for live vaccine, BCG vaccine, oral polio vaccine. And next one is uh, what it is killed vaccine, see microorganisms such as bacteria or virus killed by heat or chemicals are called killed or inactivated vaccine. They require a primary dose followed by a subsequent booster dose, example typhoid vaccine, cholera vaccine, pertussis vaccine and uh, vaccination tab combined vaccine for typhoid, paratyphoid and paratyphoid B. So, this is called typhoid, paratyphi A, paratyphi B. This is called what a vaccine tab, it is a combined vaccine. Anything, sorry, immunization schedule is given. The World Health Organization in the year 1970 has given a schedule for immunization. This schedule is carried out in almost all countries. Table gives the schedule of vaccination procedure followed in India that we will see. Let us see first one BCG, it is a bacillus calmety curin. This was prepared by two French workers calmety and curin. The bacilli are weakened and used for immunization against tuberculosis. And DPT, it is a combined vaccine for protection against diphtheria, pertussis that is whooping cough and tetanus. So, these are the various vaccines, name of the various vaccines uh, used against various diseases. And MMR, it is the name of vaccine. Um, this vaccine used against three diseases, mumps, measles and rubella, which gives protection against viral infections. Next, DT, it is a dual antigen or combined antigen. It gives protection from diphtheria and tetanus. And TT, it is tetanus toxoid toxin of tetanus bacteria. And TAB already I have set. And now we are going to see the immunization schedule, how to follow the immunization schedule in a baby. In the newborn baby, we can give a BCG vaccine first dosage within 2 or 3 days. And at the 15th day, we can give oral polio. Oral means what through mouth we can give. That is called oral polio first dose. And 6th week DPT and polio first dose. 10th week DPT and polio actually second dose, 14th week DPT and polio, third dose we hear everything given as first dose but this is a, uh, given as 6th week first dose, 10th ten, week second, 14th week uh, third and uh, at the month of 9 to 12 measles is given as a first dose and 18 to 24th month DPT and polio first dose. And 15th month, two, two years, MMR vaccine have been given as a first dose, two to three years tab that is typhoid, paratype A, paratype B, uh, two doses at one month gap and four to six years DT and polio should be given and 10th year TT and tab and 16th year TT and tab second booster should be given. And, uh, Children, you have one uh, homework. Here is a tablet column, and uh, it's given in this tablet column various sexually transmitted bacterial and viral disease is given, and uh, what are its causative agent, mode of how it transmitted, which organs or tissues affected, what are the symptoms. As like waterborne, airborne disease is given. Please go through. Suppose if you have any doubt, you can text me in person. And uh, today's homework, explain the structure of virus and uh, transmission, mode of transmission, symptoms, prevention and control. This is the only one question I will give as a homework, complete and send it to me, ok children. And one thing I want to instruct you, uh, that you are going to have a monthly test I hope. For that the portion is uh, from the beginning to till this lesson, ok. That is uh, from chapter 17 to tell this I think so and please uh, prepare well for the test. I will send the rest of the lessons uh, question answer PDF very soon. Okay children. So complete your homework and send it to me. Bye.